dollars by various other organizations spent on cross-country travel promoting statehood. Atlanta to Albuquerque, Chicago to Seattle. We even paid to push D.C. statehood in Belfast, Maine, which apparently have wonderful pastries, according to receipts. But with every dollar critical to achieving the decades-long struggle of making D.C. a state, we wanted to know who's watching over all this money. We asked Mayor Bowser. First, she dodged the question. How is the money being tracked by the city to make sure that taxpayer money is being spent wisely? Uh, I would have to ask you to talk to our Office of Federal Regional Affairs about the process. Then the mayor reverted back to her talking points. Anytime that we can have 86% of voters come out and support D.C. statehood and have it be a topic uh, for national campaigns, uh, we know that we're headed in the right direction. So that's One well, last question. No, so to that, be that clear, you question. don't know Thank for you. sure how the money is being tracked, do you? Thanks, everybody. All right. In fact, we haven't found anyone from the city who does. Just stand up. You're standing up for D.C. I want you to stand up and show me why. Even in these Jenkins, a lifelong civil rights advocate who probably knows a lot more about statehood than spreadsheets, admits moving the needle with these statehood grants can be a challenge. You know, their goal is always to have national impact. I don't know if it had national impact or not. I'm really not sure. Yeah. You know, because it's on YouTube, it depends on how many hits you get. That rap contest, which cost taxpayers around 6,500 bucks, got about 130 hits on YouTube. Jenkins says she spent the rest of Free DC's statehood grant, about $3,500, to hire someone to update the group's statehood documentary. Only problem with that. Mm -mm. Where is the documentary? I want to I be able to see that. Is that on YouTube yeah, as well? Yeah, it was on our website, but um, when we checked on it, it wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I it. couldn't find it on the yeah. website either. That documentary has been permanently removed from the internet for copyright infringement. There's no mention of that spending in Jenkins' year-end report to the city, but none of that seemed to matter to DC government or the statehood office. This year, instead of giving Jenkins and Free DC a $10,000 statehood grant, they upped it to $15,000. People need inspiration. They need information and inspiration. And that's what we're doing. So what will your tax dollars be spent on this year? The proposals for grant spending this year are waiting for you on our WSA 9 website. Plus, we're going to show you what they plan to do with that cash. Now, your WUSA 9 weather forecast, sponsored by Cox. All right, here comes round two of our rainfall. Pretty good rains overnight, looking at essentially steady to uh, moderate rain across most of the metro, certainly east of uh, I-81. That's going to just get more intense as we go through the night. Uh, right now, temperature-wise, 42 D.C., 38 in Gettysburg, 34 in Leesburg, 39 in Stafford. Just a miserable night, and you couple that with the fog and the dense fog advisory until midnight. Hopefully, you're able to stay home tonight. 7 a.m. tomorrow, we have some building moisture back to the west. Another slug of moisture comes in here. In fact, by 10 a.m., see the yellow? That's moderate rainfall. Uh, much of Fairfax County, Loudoun County, Montgomery County. So big time rains, temps in the 40s. The good news, though, it marches northward pretty quickly. So by the time we get to 1 o'clock, most of the steady rain is just north of D.C., about to cross over the Maryland uh, PA border. And then we're just left with showers. And a bland line of showers will try to develop as a cold front rolls through. That'll do a couple things. It'll finally clear us out, give us a break from the precipitation, but also increase our winds. As we go through the afternoon and early tomorrow night, winds could gust over 30 miles per hour in the metro and over 40 miles per hour uh, in the uh, mountains. So temperature wise, you look at this, you go, eh, not bad. Low 50s tomorrow and low 50s on Sunday, but then back in the 40s on Monday, 50 on Tuesday. Then some Arctic air will kind of make its way in here as we get into the middle part of uh, next week. So. Speaking of next week, this is Monday, 6 a.m. European is still the by far the most aggressive model with this. The blue is snow, green is uh, rain, and the magenta is a mixture. That's early in the morning on Monday showing snow to the west. It kicks to rain very quickly. By lunchtime, it's rain in D.C., still no snow, some snow up around I-70. But the warm air is going to win this battle. No question about that. The question is how long will that cold air sit here on Monday morning for the commute? By uh, 6 p.m., we just have rain across the metro, and then by 11.30 Monday night, it is all rain, even up into PA and even across the mountains. Another cold rain heading our way. Okay, so yellow weather alert for tomorrow. Rain tapers to showers, so not going to be continuous.